Voice of Disruption, Ken Rakowski, as we meet people that are disrupting the world, disrupting themselves at the same time. I'm honored to have joining us in our studio is Jabu, who, uh, Jabu, you're initially from South Africa, right? Yes, indeed. Where in South Africa? I was born in uh, Johannesburg, jo right on the outskirts of Johannesburg, actually, uh, in, the, in the township called Alexandra Township. D describe that place where you lived. What's it like? A shanty town. A shanty town. A shanty town. Um, basically, that's where uh, my people. I grew up in squalor. Um, you have these uh, homes that are built with tin cans, pretty much, and, and cardboards. Uh, there is no um, infrastructure, there's mm -hmm. no running water, um, there is no sewage system. So uh, that's where I grew up. So as you're in this environment, and that's home for you, mm -hmm. what do you see as next? Because many people, they live there for their, their whole life. How do you get out of that type of environment? Uh, honestly, I've, I've been struggling with trying to find out what the answers could be for the masses. Um, I have done my part to continue to help my people. That's think, today. I'm that's saying today. when you live there. When I live when, there. How do you see the out? How do people that live there see beyond that? Education was the biggest out for young people growing out in South Africa. Uh, you knew that if you could get some form of education, then you could find a way to get a scholarship abroad and then continue your education. Then that allowed you a way to get out of but that's a small uh, group, living. That's right? A, that's a very small group, and that's a group of people who are even willing to actually uh, accept the minimum uh, education, uh, corrupt education system that we were receiving at the time. Wow. Uh, the apartheid system had created an inferior type of education system, so uh, there were some of my people who said half a loaf is better is better than nothing and therefore they went to school and there were others who said no we want full loaves we if you're not going to give us the full loaves we're just not going to uh, take your education system so uh, you go back now as you're a young child out there when did you find art as the core to you my very beginnings of uh, of of me finding my passion uh, as an artist began when I joined an underground movement called the African National Congress, which is Nelson Mandela's organization. I joined that organization uh, not knowing what I was really going into. And um, one of my tasks was to create flyers and posters for the movement. How old were you? I was 12 years old. 12 years old. And then I turned 13 years old, and we got raided by the police. Okay. Uh, an informant had told uh, the police about what we had been doing, mobilizing uh, the people in the community to fight against the apartheid system. I had just created uh, a T-shirt. Do me a favor, step back real quick. I'll yeah. get to this. When you say apartheid, I want people to understand what is apartheid during this time? What is that? Uh, apartheid, apart means obviously apart. Ah. Um, so apartheid system was created to divide people according to the color. Uh, the color of your skin, right. cultural background, the language you spoke, uh, and, and your culture, your cultural group. If you were Zulu, uh, they, they used the, their method was to divide and conquer. So they do, we were not just divided according to the color of our skin, but also divided according to our cultural background. So the ANC back then, the goal was to actually bring everything together, correct? Yes. That was the goal. That was the goal. So the government that was supporting the apartheid, when they saw what you were doing, even as a young teenager, yeah. they felt like you were a criminal. I was a terrorist. You were a terrorist. I was a terrorist. Um, so young people back then were, especially uh, young black males, were a big threat to mobilizing um, our people to fight against the government. So they um, they really cracked down on us. They made sure to make an example of anyone who would join the movement. You were thrown in jail. I was thrown in prison. Prison. What was with, that like? With, that, that was uh, the most uh, difficult time uh, of my life. Uh, you grow up very quickly. I was uh, put in prison with adults, um, some uh, of which were hardcore criminals. The only thing that really saved my life 
from that environment was I was fortunate that there were other uh, prisoners who were political prisoners who found out about me. And later on, they advocated for my release. So while you're in prison, were you able to still do your art in prison? No. So everything was ripped away from you? Everything is taken away from you, but uh, the most important thing that I got out of that experience was uh, we use uh, the slogan that says, each one, teach one. So political prisoners were, were sharing knowledge, we were sharing knowledge amongst each other. I, I really got to find out about who Nelson Mandela was um, in prison than I did when I was outside. Um, and so, so you found a stronger connection. Very strong connection. I was encouraged by some of the political prisoners to use my art um, as a vehicle to continue the fight. And that's when I really re found out how important it is to become uh, an artist. An artist. An artist, yeah. So you got out of prison several years later, right? Yes. Uh, a year later. A year later. A year later. I spent a year, full year in prison. My uh, parents had uh, spent months uh, looking for me in mortuaries, looking for me in unburied, they unmarked no graveyards. no idea what happened to you. See, during that time, uh, when you were arrested, they, they don't process you, like no one gets to know who you are, especially if you are arrested for um, it, political reasons. Mm -hmm. uh, you are taken in and you are not processed. They don't fingerprint you or take your picture or any of that stuff. So no one gets to know where you are. It's and like so cattle. You, yeah. So your parents start looking for you um, in mortuaries. And like if they don't see you for months, they ask your friends, they go everywhere. So for you, and it was difficult. For your family, it was incredibly difficult at the same time. Yes. How were you f freed? How did you get out? Um, just through my involvement with uh, some of the older political prisoners, they really uh, made my case to uh, the, the people who were keeping us in prison to release me. Um, and this was after I had already been tortured and spent 30 days in solitary confinement. So you've done so much since then. Um, the decades later, you are in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. How did you make it here? There were a series of things that happened uh, during my life after prison. Um, but just I, leaving. I, I went back to, uh, to school and finished school. And while I was in school, uh, in high school, the uh, organization came to me and, and said, we are recruiting young people to become youth ambassadors. Uh, we would like for you to join uh, these 26 young people to go to Washington, D.C. to study peace and conflict resolution. Wow. And you were very fortunate. I was fortunate. So how do you give back to your culture and your people back home? Because you're here, you're, you're in a free environment. Mm -hmm. You're not persecuted. You're able to expand upon your art and grow. Yes. How do you give back? How can we give back? Uh, well, one of the things that I've been able to do is organize artists from my country to teach them the business end of doing art. So I'm able to bring, there's an organization in uh, Chicago called Color Me Africa. We bring artists uh, to Chicago and uh, we also take them to New York City and we teach them the business end of doing art so they can go back home and make a living. Uh, make a living. And as you look back now at what's happened with uh, South Africa, because mm -hmm. a lot's happened yes. since Nelson Mandela, yes. is, is South Africa moving in a positive direction or do you think it's stagnating? Um, it, it was looking like it was um, uh, stagnated uh, for a while there, but uh, I think with a new uh, president um, that things might change, and I'm, I'm hopeful. Um, but most importantly, I think, you know, uh, the, it, it's the people at the ground roots level who can change their own lives and not wait for the government to actually make changes for us. People um, know you as Jabu, the artist, artist Jabu. Yeah. You, you see art in everything. You're mm -hmm. able to walk around and actually see beauty, and I, I admire that. Is that something you can teach others, where they can actually see the beauty in something as if it's a, a portrait or a painting? Absolutely. How can um, we do that? How can we see the beauty 
as if it's art like you do? I uh, would like to, uh, well, come spend time with me. Oh, uh, stop it. Like we can't all spend time with yeah. you. Um, Teach us, somebody that's sitting in somewhere around the world right now, how can they see beauty in things? It's, it's about looking at, at uh, things in, the, in a simple way. Like, color is uh, liberating to me. Uh, I use artwork as an emotional outlet. So look at it like you did when you, you were a child uh, in, in preschool and you were painting outside the lines. That's what art is to me. And if you outside can the lines? It, yes. You are all about outside the lines. Mm -hmm. Most of your artwork, it's, it's huge, it's, it's big. Yeah, you like big artwork mm -hmm. and you like animals. Yeah. You like painting animals. Why animals? I chose animals because from using Nelson Mandela as, uh, I look at Nelson Mandela as my inspiration for what he stood for. Uh, he spoke for the voiceless. And for me today, I, I look at wildlife, uh, especially animals that are on the endangered species list as the voiceless. So I wanna be able to speak for the voiceless in terms of wildlife and bring the awareness about some of the uh, endangered species. Uh, that are on there. People don't know this, but lions are on the endangered species list. So um, that's the reason why I paint uh, these different creatures. Now, I know a lot of your paintings are up for sale. People can find out more about you. Where should they go? What's the website? Uh, artistjabu.com, jabu.art. That's it. That's, that's where it. you go. Jabu, I appreciate you hanging out with us. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Ken. Famous artist Jabu spending time with us. Find the beauty in art by going back as a child and appreciate its innocence. We have a lot more going on. I'm Ken Rakowski. That's Jabu. You're right here with us on The Voice of Disruption. We'll be right back. Thank you.